everyone. So this summer I moved to the suburbs and my house came with a lot of backyard wildlife. As a result, I've been using one lens almost exclusively when I'm at home, the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary lens. This lens right here, which is only off my camera because I'm filming this video right now. After owning this lens for almost a year, I started noticing myself using it less often just because it does get a little bit heavy after carrying it for long periods of time. But now I'm using it pretty much daily and it's my number one lens for backyard wildlife photography. My backyard and neighborhood is full of birds and chipmunks, squirrels, rabbits, nearby groundhogs. I say nearby because they're in the neighbor's yards, not mine. The occasional fox or two and every so often a barred owl. And this is why I absolutely love this lens for backyard wildlife photography. One, you can use this lens to capture faraway animals that are probably afraid of you. I've used this lens to snap a quick photo of a fox running across the street or a small faraway bird like a hummingbird on the other side of the yard. The ability to zoom in all the way to 600 millimeters is really helpful for timid animals. Two, the lens is heavy, but for backyard wildlife photography, that doesn't matter so much because you can keep the lens and camera mounted on a tripod if you wish, or just pull it out for a couple seconds whenever you see something. Now, there's two versions of this lens, the contemporary and the sport. The sport version has a better weather ceiling. However, for backyard photography, this is no big deal because in inclement weather, you can just go inside. Three, paired with my Canon 5D Mark IV, I find that the photos I take with this lens come out pretty sharp, even at 600 millimeters, as long as the lighting is good. However, the lens will be sharper at 400 millimeters than like 600 millimeters, for example. But for your average wildlife photography hobbyist, this probably isn't a big deal. I still love my photos that I take at 600 millimeters. And if you look at them here, you know, on YouTube or on Instagram, you're not going to see much of a degradation of quality. You know, if you blow it up, you'll, you'll see that. I still love my photos taken at 600 millimeters and for, you know, what I use these photos for, a little loss of sharpness is no big deal. Now, those of you who watched my other videos about this lens already know what I think about it and my views really haven't changed a whole lot over the past year. As I mentioned in the other video, which I'll link up here somewhere, the biggest con that I see with this lens is its performance in low light. Most of my other zoom lenses have the ability to shoot at f2.8. However, the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens has a maximum aperture of f5 at 150 millimeters and f6.3 at 600 millimeters. This means you'll be pushing that ISO in low light situations, like at dawn or dusk, or even just in a really shady area. For your average daytime photography though, this lens is just fine. And if your camera can handle those higher ISOs, it's probably also not a big deal. But at dawn and dusk, your photos might not be the crispiest. Again, depending on your camera. When I saw these barred owls just before nightfall, right down the street, I pushed my ISO to 20,000, which definitely degraded the quality of the image. But with a super low shutter speed already, there was no other way I could photograph these owls without any extra lighting. In terms of quality, these are probably one of my lowest quality images taken with this lens just because of the high ISO. But you know what? It's a good memory. I saw these barred owls right next door and I'm glad I have the photos. The other con is that getting smooth videos with this lens will require a stabilizer of some sort, whether that's a tripod, a monopod, your knee, a table, whatever stable surface you have, especially if you're shooting at 600 millimeters. But again, this con is less of a con if you're shooting in your backyard, because grabbing a tripod and setting it up at home is much easier than setting one up during a hike while traveling 
or while you're taking a walk somewhere. If you don't have a tripod or a monopod with you and you're shooting handheld video with this lens, then try to stabilize it in some way. And if your camera allows, then try to shoot in a higher frame rate. This allows you to slow down your footage in post and get some smoother looking shots. If I'm shooting at 600 millimeter, I'll frequently shoot in 60 frames per second and slow down the footage instead of shooting at 24 frames per second. Anyway, one subject that I've been shooting a lot of with this lens is my resident chipmunks. At first, this lens was perfect for chipmunk photography because I could watch them from a distance and catch them in their natural habitat. Well, as natural as it gets around here, their natural habitat often entailed raiding bird feeders. But after a while, the chipmunks started warming up to me. The peanuts might have had something to do with it. And a lens with this much zoom was overkill since they would literally eat from my hand and having this lens next to me was virtually useless because they were too close. Still, I like to put out little props in houses for them and photograph them from a distance with my Sigma. When I'm a bit further away, they act a little bit different than when I'm right beside them and I tend to capture a lot of really funny moments that way. By the way, I created an Instagram and a TikTok account for one of my chipmunks, the chipmunk who lives under my porch, and you can find all of my chipmunk content at Chippy from the Block. If you love chipmunks as much as I do, feel free to head over to those platforms and show my little chipmunks some love. Anyway, that's it for today. Let me know in the comments what your favorite lens is for backyard wildlife photography. Do you also use the Sigma lens or do you use something different? If you wanna check out the Sigma lens that I use, you can look at the link that I have in my description below. And as you can see, I have spent a lot of time this summer in my backyard doing more backyard photography than anything else and in the past few months i have definitely photographed more chipmunks than humans anyways like this video if you like it subscribe if you are new here and i will see you in the next video take care